there are a number of seemingly impossible ruins, and even still functioning temples which can be found dotted all over India. Most of these structures, somehow conjured from solid bedrock or stone hillside, with such accuracy they baffle all who explore them. What's more, there is also evidence left upon some of these structures, mysterious scarring, which not only suggests some form of machining actually having been involved in the construction, but these same mysterious marks can also be found upon ancient sites in other parts of the world. And while researching any other compelling fragments of evidence that may have been left upon these ancient Indian temples, we have stumbled upon yet another ancient site, also within India, which is displaying the same compelling, telltale signs of ancient machining, which was possibly responsible for the construction of these sites. The Hoysalaswara Temple in Halabadu is an incredible structure, apparently built a mere 900 years ago, yet possesses columns and other features created with such precision they actually indicate the existence of advanced ancient technology. Discovered by Praveen Mohan, symmetrical grooves found upon many of the multi-ton, complex designed temples columns. These grooves would be impossible to achieve using a hammer and chisel. Thus, they are a remnant left by another, unknown construction process, most likely a lathe. Additionally, although turning lathes were indeed in existence as far back as 900 years ago, the accuracy of the grooves when they were made, the precision and symmetry visible makes the columns seemingly impossible to have been created with such primitive technologies. Another curious discovery at the temple in the hands of a god known as Masana Bhairava is a clear representation a type of gear mechanism called planetary gears. As Praveen puts it, quote, the outer gear has 32 teeth and the inner gear has exactly half the number or 16 teeth, which is precisely how we use reduction gears today. If this were just an imaginary tool, how could the ancient sculptors come up with this gear ratio of 2 to 1? Even more interesting, we can also see a fastener that goes around this mechanism and is locked in at the center. Today we use the exact same technology. How could primitive people working with chisels and hammers imagine such a mechanism?" End quote. It seems the more we understand about the history of our planet, the more people begin to notice regarding the secrets of our past. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Along with the many other unexplainable feats, undoubtedly left by a highly advanced, highly capable lost civilization. There are the countless examples of extreme precision stone cutting. Not only is this remarkable past capability visible in their many stone walls and fortresses alike, but also in their exquisite artwork. If we look upon the statues of ancient Egypt, for example, the symmetry, along with the proportional precision present within their statues, is not only perfection personified, but unquestionably far too advanced for the so-called academically claimed builders to have achieved. According to the academics, along with their subsequent supposed accurate writings, these extraordinary feats of artistic perfection were somehow created by a group of individuals who were merely equipped with copper tools. Not only is this claim clearly ignorant of reality, but to create such works of symmetrical accuracy was unquestionably the work of a group of individuals far more advanced than even that of the Victorians, let alone those who thrived along the banks of the Nile more than 3,000 years ago. Not only is this precision present along the Giza Plateau, but it is also found at ancient sites all around the world. Masterfully created statues and structures often carved straight out of stone bedrock, with such vision and artistic prowess that many now presume that the individuals capable of such feats must have had advanced machinery at their disposal. Most of ancient India, for example, is created with such delicacy and exactness that we today could only accomplish the same with the utilization of modern machines. Furthermore, many scholars and independent researchers even a number of highly recognized academic Egyptologists have reluctantly concluded that many of the basalt, gypsum, and other vases shaped from extremely hard stones, and indeed a number of multi-ton sarcophagus lids, were indeed turned into the shapes we see them as today 
on some kind of ancient, enormous lathe. This conclusion is made regardless of the fact that to create such enormous stoneworks on a lathe would have undoubtedly been out of the realms of capabilities for those who are currently claimed as their creators. Not only do the ornamental artifacts of Egypt and much further afield strongly indicate machined working, but there is also overwhelming evidence of these same machines reminiscent of modern stone cutting equipment present all over the world. Yet, conveniently, it is quietly ignored by the same individuals who have supposedly unraveled the history of these sites. Puma Punku, Giza's basalt floor, other areas throughout Giza, Peru, Malta, the list goes on. All these sites not only indicate an advanced, highly capable constructor, but also possess countless marks that, as of yet, we can only explain logically as having been left by precision, quick-rotation, stone-cutting machinery. They are yet another overwhelming collection of evidence, which not only flies in the face of current academic explanation, but proof of an advanced, now lost civilization having once been responsible for these sites' construction. They are highly compelling. India is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown of ancient sculpture, and although Rome is home to the Renaissance, an attraction which lures enormous numbers of people there every year, India is unquestionably home to sculpture, which would put even the most efficient of the Italian masters to shame. However, conveniently, academia, and thus most of the modern world, overlook these astonishing feats of ancient art in favor of less controversial artistic wonders. One of our tried and tested methods of establishing whether an ancient artifact, or indeed an ancient ruin, attributed to a less capable, more modern imposter, is actually evidence of forgotten lost knowledge, is finding the puzzling accomplishments often hidden within the architecture or construction. One of the many examples of these is polygonal masonry. And although the modern man does indeed practice this lost art, a good example of this being found within the Cotswolds in the UK, known as Cotswold Dry Stone Walling, once built and still used to mark out very ancient land boundaries, and amazingly, longer than the Great Wall of China. These very old walls, created without the use of mortar, are compelling examples of a fragmented technique either borrowed or, possibly intriguingly, leftover memories of a now forgotten technology. And although these more modern attempts range in age stretching far into thousands of years, the lesser capability of the builders is clear for all to see. Our point being that when these ancient walls stretching far before the Romans are compared to Mesoamerica, Peruvian, and indeed ancient Indian ruins, the exquisite polygonal architecture, the precise carving and stone building present, are clear, strong, controversial evidences of a forgotten civilization. How did these ancient builders acquire such a sophisticated knowledge and awareness of stone shapes, and the subsequent placement of each stone, perfectly placed against one another, forming impenetrable barriers which have stood the tests of the ages? We feel that, regardless of what academia claims is the truth, pertaining to the origin and creators of these ancient wonders, the skills required to create them are thankfully beginning to become apparent to the majority rather than the few. This ancient, forgotten people clearly attained a level of stoneworking and construction knowledge we are yet to acquire. Clearly, a far more advanced and capable people than we are today let alone the modern historical imposters academia claims as the culprits. We feel, regardless of others' claims, the evidence to suggest an intercontinental, highly advanced, technologically superior civilization once flourished here on our planet is highly compelling. A few months ago, we did a video regarding an enigmatic mountain which rests within modern-day Tibet we touched upon the amazing legends, speaking of the mountain actually being that of an ancient man-made pyramid. 
which according to such legends, is placed at the center of the universe. They spoke of a mysterious giant eye placed upon the top of the mountain, an eye which according to said legends, will reveal itself when the ice and snow within the area melts away. Akin to a story containing the Eye of Mordor, yet hopefully not as malevolent. Although Mount Kailash can be found within modern-day Tibet, its location is very close to the borders of India, a place which few know possesses one of, if not the most amazing ancient structure to have ever been discovered or indeed built upon our planet. A structure which dwarfs the Great Pyramids, and indeed the Great Sphinx with artistic wonder. Actually known as the Kailash Temple, it is an exquisitely cut series of supposed praying temples and other communal buildings which was, many thousands of years ago, carved straight out of an enormous horseshoe-shaped rock resting within a hillside. According to mainstream academia, Kailash Temple was somehow built by a primitive people using primitive tools during a duration of 400 years, from 200 BC to 600 BC. However, no one seems to be able to explain how such a primitive culture could have possibly created something so awe-inspiring, something so artistically accurate and wonderful, something we would indeed struggle to recreate today. A structure not only architecturally accurate, but also drenched in a masterpiece of sculpture. Largely accepted as a flawless piece of art, no less than 200,000 tons of stone was masterfully carved away, creating several separate temples, each drenched in tiny artistic detail. Rediscovered in 1819, is it possible that the Hindu decorations found within were merely later additions? Additions to a relic left actually built by a civilization far more advanced and far more ancient than we are allowed to publicly believe? It is understandable for one to wonder how did a primitive civilization create such a wonder with primitive tools, attaining such a perfection, such refined finish to each tiny detail? It is conveniently unexplained just how they managed to cut into this single block of rock with such precision and indeed vision, adorning the structure with thousands of animals. It seems as if it were a tribute, a gift depicting what can be found on our planet. Is Mount Kailash, as legends say, really the center of the universe? Is this mind-bogglingly detailed, most intricately built ancient temple by a long way actually a tribute to this fact? Made up of temples which are all now perceived to be shared between three faiths, Buddhist, Hindu, and Jain. Are these multiple faiths further evidence of a re-inhabitation rather than a construction? The 200,000 tons of rock, for example, is nowhere to be found. And, as previously covered in the Kailash video, the same is seen with the apparent enormous excavation found around the base of Mount Kailash itself. Compelling evidence for manipulation of the landscape, giving credence to the legends of it being, in fact, an enormous pyramid. Regardless of this, the fact that the temple carries the same name as this mysterious and still unclimbed mountain within Tibet, we find highly compelling.